afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. If you're looking for answers to questions about gardening, then you need to know about the UVM Extension Master Gardener Helpline. The helpline is staffed with trained volunteers to provide you with science-based information about home gardening and horticulture issues. Keith Silva tells us more. If you've got a question about your garden, Carl Dorner is your man. From our Master Gardener Helpline. Dorner volunteers at the University of Vermont Extension Master Gardener Call Center. Do you have a lot of these plants? Do they all look the same? I enjoy talking to people, number one. Um, I believe in the, in the mission of Extension, um, and that's probably my primary reason. That that's, I think it's important to provide access uh, to scientific, to, to science-based research in the solution of horticulture and agricultural problems and to extend that information to homeowners, not just to commercial growers. And that's what we do here. So I find it very rewarding. I like being able to set people's mind at rest. Uh, people invest a lot of themselves into their gardens and their home landscapes. And when they have a problem, it's a problem. If you have any further questions, please feel free to give us a call. Volunteers at the Helpline take about 2,000 calls a year since the Vermont Master Gardener program started in 1991, the helpline has received 42,000 calls. Heather Carrington is the program's coordinator. The UVM Extension Master Gardener Helpline is a resource for all Vermonters to get answers to their home gardening questions. It's staffed entirely by volunteers who have been trained in the Extension Master Gardener course. So they've had 45 hours of training from UVM Extension faculty on all aspects of sustainable home horticulture. There aren't that many resources that are available for the home gardener. There are plenty of resources available for commercial gardeners. But what this does is it gives all Vermonters access to the research-based information being developed at the University of Vermont. The helpline aligns with UVM's obligation as a land-grant university. It's one of the missions of Extension, actually, as a land-grant university to share the science-based information research that's being developed there. So we really do keep it exactly to that. In fact, actually, our volunteers are prohibited from giving that sort of folksy home remedies um, answer to questions. So they actually have to use research and science-based information, and that's what they've been trained in in the first place as Extension Master Gardeners. When they're doing research on it, they'll only refer to .edu, which would be university-based websites, or .gov websites. So they're, they're not going to be looking into folk remedies. Rob Lee Smith became a Master Gardener this year. For her, volunteering at the helpline provides an experience as distinct as Vermont itself. The plants are so vital to our life. I mean, it's not simply food and shelter and clothing, but the oxygen we breathe, this, it is the biology of life, and so that's terribly important. You know, it's so nice to be able to specialize in Vermont's gardening, because that is unique, and you can't gain that knowledge anywhere else. Thanks to the internet, there are more resources and more information. But all those pages and websites can't replace talking with someone one-on-one. -on -one. I think people want the interaction. This phone, this interactive resource, I think is, is more valuable to people than just uh, browsing the internet for information. And that's what I want. I want to be able to tell someone what's going on, to hear what, you know, get the feedback from them. So maybe I'm not thinking about the most important thing. I think the interactive nature of our work is, is what people are looking for, and it's what I would, what I look for when I call. The UVM Extension Master Gardener Helpline, a resource for answers to your gardening questions. Pick up the phone and give them a call. In South Burlington, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. The Master Gardener Helpline is available statewide by calling toll-free 1-800-639-2230. That's 1-800-639-2230. You can also contact the Master Gardener program by using the website on your screen. It's uvm.edu slash mastergardener. Our next segment features a UVM student who shares her knowledge of food and nutrition with elementary school students as part of a special 4-H program. For more on that, here's Across the Fences' Rebecca Gollin. Students at the Orchard School in South Burlington are cooking up brownies with a twist. Well, there were black beans in the brownies and that was replacing flour. And there was another one, it was avocado, and that was replacing half of the butter. Was it like any brownies you'd ever seen? No. no. The chocolate looked different. 
but it smelled really good. Yeah, except for the avocado. These students are participating in an after-school program being offered by University of Vermont Extension's 4-H program. It's called Food Fun and Friends, and the idea is to show students new ways to incorporate healthy foods into their diets. I wasn't looking to be like gourmet, just <laughs> make them understand that there are substitutions out there that they can use when making certain splurges, I guess, like brownies, just to make them a little bit healthier. I know one kid today mentioned... Megan Morris, who's leading the group, is a nutrition and food science major at UVM. She's using cooking and games in order to teach the students about nutrition. The lessons seem to be getting through. We make tasty, delicious, healthy, sometimes, snacks. sometimes healthy, marshmallows, mostly, yeah. mostly healthy, Most food, mm, snacks. Everyone does get to mix. Morris is also raising awareness of the foods the kids are making, teaching them to score it based on appearance, taste, and texture. I just wanted them to think about what they were eating when they were eating it, rather than just gobbling it down and being like, oh yes, I liked it, but more thinking about why you liked it and what makes it taste different, what makes the texture different. My favorite was the avocado brownie. Mine was black bean. How come would you like that one? I like the avocado because the texture wasn't as gooey as the black bean. Mm. What did you like about the black bean, Julia? Because it tasted like black beans. <laughs> it was gluten-free, and I'm not really allergic to anything, but it's still, it was the best brownie I have ever tasted. Which one? Um, the avocado. What was so good about it? Um, I really liked the texture because I never really tried that kind of texture before. I also need that same amount of baking powder. Can you do that? Before getting involved in Food Fun and Friends, Morris didn't know about 4-H. She only heard about it when she got matched up as part of the Food Systems Internship Program at UVM. These are the kinds of experiences that really help them integrate their learning so that they're more prepared to actually do that in the workplace uh, when they do graduate and get a job. Matt Myers is the UVM Food Systems Internship Coordinator. The new program is growing exponentially. Myers placed eight students in internships the first semester and 30 students in the second. This program offers students from across different majors an opportunity to, to work on farms, to work with nonprofit organizations, to work doing research in the field, and bring their talents out to uh, the businesses, organizations, the government agencies that can use that kind of uh, real enthusiasm and youthful excitement. They've never done this before. You don't need too much. Myers spends his time recruiting both the businesses and organizations that need interns and the students who want to find an internship. Megan was a, a great example of a student from UVM who is bright, motivated, and wants to get hands-on experience. She, she came to my office, she had heard about some internships, she was looking for something a little different. Um, as part of UVM Extension, I know uh, we have 160 plus staff who can take on interns, so placed her with 4-H staff member, and she was able to really apply both her skills with nutrition, but also her skills working with kids. So it really is a great way for her to explore that area of her potential profession and also to get some good preparation for the workplace. And he got to know me so personally, even in just two visits, not even the three when I met with him, that he was able to pick this internship for me that I could not be more happy with and it's a great opportunity for me. And he put me in touch with Rose at 4-H and she's incredible too. She's, we're always emailing ideas back and forth. She gave me all these books over the summer to sort of help me create these lesson plan ideas and come up with questions that I should ask them to kind of like probe at what they're learning to see if they're learning anything which they're helping because it's making me realize that they are learning something so my mentors for this have they're amazing. The program is growing so fast that Myers estimates placing a hundred students in internships next year. Morris, who's on her second go-around leading the after-school group, 
has learned a few tricks about what keeps the kids engaged. So we're going to replace half of the butter with avocado, okay? We go around in a circle, so you don't know if you get the job that you want. And when we were making the avocado brownies, most people got two jobs. Making some healthy alternatives to what you can buy at a grocery store, which is also sort of where I got the idea of the wheat thins. Like, you can make these at home. Why not make these at home? And it's definitely a lot easier to buy them at the store because it, it took us a while to make them. But they had a lot of fun making them, so that's, that makes me happy. This hands-on experience has been invaluable for Morris as she heads towards a career bringing nutrition education into schools. And for these students, learning about nutrition while getting hands-on, well, that's just fun. I like the big part of making everything with your friends. Just spend some time with them and cook. Well, I like to make it with a group of people so that way we can have a lot of helping hands and it's fun to watch other people make food and not just yourself. And after all, fun is in the name. It was really fun and there was a lot of food and we got to hang out with our friends. That's why it's called Food Fun and Friends. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, who wants a black bean brownie? In South Burlington, I'm Rebecca Gollan with Across the Fence. Thank you, Rebecca. Our final segment is the spotlights a Vermont business owner who was recently honored by the White House. President Obama recognized Randy George, who is the owner of the Red Hen Baking Company in Middlesex, for George's work to improve the lives of working Vermonters. Across the Fence met George at his bakery a few years back, and we reached into our 60th anniversary archive to show you this report from Keith Silva. And it does a number of different things. Randy George owns and operates Red Hen Baking in Middlesex. In the course of a day, he and his staff will make between 1,500 and 3,000 loaves of organic, handmade, hearth-baked bread. One of the things that I like about bread, uh, and, you know, why I, why I enjoy being a baker is because there, it's, it's not just about taking something that tastes good and throwing it in the pot and cooking it up and then there you are. Um, there is this entirely other thing going on. Ever since he founded Red Hen in 1999, George has been asked when he would be baking bread using only locally grown ingredients. His response was that the quantity and the quality of locally grown grains wasn't quite up to his high standards. And then in 2006, Red Hen Baking was asked to provide bread made from 100% Vermont grown grains for a statewide local board challenge. The results were mixed. There's a lot that happens between the field and the mixing bowl. The bread that we were able to make at that point in the first years of the local Vore challenge was uh, one that I had, to, I even put a disclaimer with it that went out to all of the participants in that challenge saying, I just want you to know this is not something I would normally sell in the stores, but I want to support this effort. And, um, and it's also a way of kind of a reality check, giving people a reality check on where we're at at this point in time. And where we were at was, you got bread that yeah, was edible, but um, you know, I, I did not really feel comfortable putting my name on it. We're not doing anybody any good if we don't make good bread. With the lessons learned from the local Vore Challenge still fresh in his mind, George continued to work with his local grain suppliers in a mutual effort to unlock the secret of locally grown grain. Bakers were giving the farmers feedback and saying, well, you know, this is good. It could still be better. Um, and here are some of the things we're seeing. Farmers passed on what they were seeing and hearing to University of Vermont Extension's agronomist, Heather Darby. Darby, in turn, tested, trialed, and experimented with different varieties and harvesting practices. The bakers and the local vores and the farmers are getting together and listening to each other and trying to figure out, okay, how can we create this better quality product, you know, for the end user? And the end user saying, okay, um, how can we deal maybe with some of the inconsistencies? How could we change our recipes? Or how could we work with, with what we're getting? Today, after many trials, the Red Hen Baking Company is producing three varieties of bread made from 100% locally grown ingredients, including a bread named after the renowned wheat breeder and Charlotte, Vermont's own Cyrus Pringle. 
George no longer needs to include a disclaimer with his 100% Vermont-grown breads. And he continues to be optimistic that farmers and bakers working together can develop a product that's uniquely Vermont. Like we see with so many things in so many other foods in Vermont, uh, we may not grow things that look exactly like what you see on the grocery store in uh, any other part of the country. I don't really feel like our holy grail needs to be getting to be like the Midwest. We need to be working together as farmers and bakers to uh, come up with something that, that is unique to Vermont. If you were standing here five years ago and you asked me, um, do you think there's ever going to be a time when you could make 100% Vermont, I, I would have given you a whole list of reasons why that's next to impossible. So it's really remarkable that, it, that, it's, that we're in this position. Well, thank you, Keith, and thank you for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.